all knotted out. I need to like do stuff to it. It's all stringy and gross looking. Sometimes it'd be like that. Uh, you know, I'm ready to cut it. I think I'm ready. I just, I want to cut it all off. It's so long. It's like, if I, if I got it back to like shoulder length, it might be a little more manageable. But it's just up all the time. So it's like, what's the point of even having long hair if it's just always going to be up? You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, so I have been reading uh, David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. It's really good. It's on Audible. Um, pull it up. Boom. This guy. I'm on chapter three. Oh, I just finished chapter three. I'm on chapter four. It's really good if you like like self-development stuff, uh, if you like motivational stuff, it's good, it's real good, uh, the guy, he's got a real good story, uh, he kind of came up from, like, a real toxic upbringing, and then, like, he was, like, the only black kid in, like, a lot of places, um, and, he, you know, he, he was, like, a misbehavior for a while, and, um, you know, he talks about how, he would just like cheat in school just so that he could get by and then he realized like he wasn't doing himself any favors and then like someday he like realizes he wants to be like a navy seal <clears throat> and he's like fat and overweight and he's just like he's like i'm gonna do it and then in like three months he like drops like 100 pounds and like studies his ass off for the, the navy seal test you gotta pass and that, that's as far as i've gotten so far uh but he's real good he's uh so okay there, there's there's two types of motivational self-development characters that I've, I've noticed in the world. You have the robots who are like David Goggins and like Jocko Willink and like Grant Cardone who are just like, what do you mean? Just do it. Like, go, just do it. Do it. Do it. Fuck you. Do it. <laughs> and then you have like the more gentle sort of like push uh, well, I'll put it this way. So there's, there's pushers and there's pullers. So like the robots are pushers. They go, just go do, we'll get tough love. And I'm like, oh, I kind of respond to that. Uh, cause that's how my dad did it, which is weird. Cause I didn't really respond to it the way my dad did it. But I think part of the reason was it was always just like, just do it. Like, and there wasn't any attempt to get me to understand why things were important. So, like, if you don't understand why you're doing things, it's very hard to, like, get on board and do them. Whereas, like, these good, the people that are really good at the tough love, like the Jocko Willings and the Grant Cardones and the, the David Goggins of the world, they, they give you, like, an understanding of why you're doing things. But then there's also, there's also pull people who are like, here's some suggestions. And so you'd have, like, James Clear would be a really good example um, like you could say Marie Kondo would be another good example where there's like a, it comes from like a place of empathy of like, I know things aren't going the way you want them to like, let's work together and let's get it, you know, let's figure out how we can, it's more gentle. And so for some people that they respond better to that. So there's these like two camps and I like them both. I mean, I like all self-development cause I'm just like, it's like motivation porn, I guess, for me, you know, you just, and there is like a danger to that is, is you get too hyped on like these, finding these life hacks and stuff and you like just don't get going on the, the thing. Uh, but like you could also look at like well, pretty much any minimalist person is kind of more of a pole person. Usually I've never seen a tough love minimalist person. So actually, you know, if you wanted to start a brand, like a new brand, uh, and you don't really care what you're doing out there, uh, try, I would say, tough love minimalism. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't think I've ever seen anyone be like, what is that? When was the last time you used it? Oh, it's been six months. Throw it away. <laughs> Just like the minimalist bully. Like, uh, that'd be a good idea. I might. I've never seen that. I think that could be fun to do as like a documentary. I'm gonna write that down. Thanks ASMR channel for giving me dumb ideas. And maybe it just ends with like, and for the people who, who really have trouble, <laughs> he just lights their house on fire. Like, what if? 
Strange likes to meditate. And when he meditates, he, he calls that uh, catching the big fish. Because he, like, goes down into his subconscious and, like, finds what he calls, like, puzzle pieces. So, like, this would be, like, a puzzle piece, you know. Um, and then you can sort, like, once you get two or three, you can kind of start to see how the picture takes shape. And then you can, you know, you start to bring in other ones. And it, it just, it, eventually you have a puzzle completed. And that's, that's all filmmaking. That's all any art is, really. Uh, but filmmaking just makes the most sense to me, so... But anyway, the whole, now we're like six and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, so David Goggins talks about uh, he did three months of just like straight hell where he was like working out for like five hours a day and the rest of the time he was just studying for this test. Uh, and he still didn't even ace the test because he like admits that he was like, he didn't really know how to learn. I mean, there's, there's probably a good chance he had some kind of learning disability just from his upbringing. Um, just so much stress and like never actually having to learn you know always just kind of cheating his way through things so um but he, he was studying and i was just like man i was thinking about that i was like okay it, it got me pumped and i'm like okay there's things i want to do in life like i want to get in shape i don't know if i have a hundred pounds to lose um because i got down at one point I got down to about 240, and now I've, like, slowly gotten back up, which, you know, I've just, like, haven't been, I think quarantine has just got to me, and I just, like, stopped trying as hard as I was, and now I'm back up, back up to, like, 260, so I want to get that back down. I think, like, it's hard to say, like, what a healthy weight is for anybody, but I think by, like, uh, by, like, numbers based on my height, because I'm, like, 6'5", I think it's like 200-ish, somewhere in there. So it's like 60 pounds to lose. But I do have like quite a bit of muscle. Um, and so it's like, I, I don't, I'm not really looking at scale numbers. I just know that I've got a gut and I don't want to have a gut. And I know getting rid of the excess fat will help with my diabetes. So um, the, the more I can facilitate that. Uh, so I'm thinking about like incorporating in his... his crazy style of, you know, working out because I've got time, you know, I spend a lot of time doom scrolling and I'm like, I'm not getting anything out of this and it's, you know, like I, sometimes I'll find some funny things. I learn a lot. I've learned a lot from just constantly scrolling Reddit, learning things, but it's like, man, I just need to, just, I, you know, it's at the point where like I've been doing pretty good in life by just kind of taking paths of least resistance and I have just kind of lucked out a lot I feel like like yes I have tried really hard at a lot of things like cameras I have put a lot of effort into getting good at operating cameras and that has paid off quite well but it's like if I'm being honest with myself I tried really hard the first like two three years and then ever since then I've kind of coasted and it's like I don't like just take pictures for fun anymore you know i don't go out and do tests like i used to go like location scouting all the time i used to go do like um like fun shoots with like models uh just to like practice and, and try weird stuff that way i could take it you know it's like i don't promote myself as well as i used to it's like I, there's a lot of things i could do so it's like okay what what would that be for me okay so like you know like working out yeah that makes sense i got my kettlebells i got enough different workout programs that i don't need to look up anymore i just need to pick one and just be like okay this is what we're doing for the next month let's do it and then i've got um this is like hit a wall <laughs> i went out of my head so i've got the workout program but it's like okay what is the workout program what is the study program for me to get better at my craft of filmmaking. How can I expand this? How can I work out my camera muscles? How can I work out my um, my knowledge? You know, like the studying, what am I studying? Like I wanna learn more about investing. I wanna be a better investor, you know, cause that seems like I'm having a ton of fun with that. Uh, cause it, it's been going well so far, but there's a saying that, uh, everybody looks like a genius in a bull market. And right now we're in a bull market. When bull market is when things are going up, a bear market is when things are
things are going down. So there's that for you. But with options trading, you it doesn't matter what the market's doing. You just have to know, you know, I mean, you have to know which way it's going, which you can't ever know, but there are ways to mitigate. So it's like, okay, so I want to be better at doing camera stuff. I want to be better at investing. I want to, like, get rid of excess fat. I want to, you know, get back into hockey shape because, fingers crossed, I should be able to get a vaccine in the next couple of weeks to, by summer, I should be able to be vaccinated get back on the ice which would be great because getting playing hockey motivates me to be healthy uh and that has carry over everywhere so it's like hockey is kind of my cornerstone habit and it's almost with the way coronavirus numbers are going down constantly and vaccines are you know we're starting to ramp up the vaccine production so it's almost like i mean i've waited this long you might as well just wait you know two or three more months uh but it's like okay i can see it's coming so it's time to get back into shape for it. And then I can get back on the ice, you know. Um, and if, if if the numbers stay as low as they have, I think I would probably be comfortable going to the public skating. I was thinking about it uh, Friday. I was going to go yesterday. But then uh, I got news that a friend of mine had the COVID and I had some in limited interaction with her uh, after she had been exposed. So it's been... Uh, not, it's been six full days and I feel fine. I don't have any symptoms. So I, I'm pretty sure we're safe. Cause it was like, it, she owns an art gallery. We went to her art gallery and she was quite far away the whole time. I mean, we were only there for like 20 minutes. Uh, but you know, we kept distance, we kept masks on. So I think we're, we're okay. Uh, but her and her husband got it. And I hung out with her and her husband, uh, a couple the night before that even, but apparently that was the day she was exposed. So she was exposed uh, after I, I spent like two hours at that art gallery doing some photography uh, with her and her husband. And then they went out and uh, were exposed by a friend of theirs. So then the next day was when we went to the art gallery. <clears throat> so, and then I cough. <laughs> so I'm like, I think I'm fine. <laughs> Big or cool. <clears throat> and so there's like no good news 
scrolling your feed, really. It's just kind of like, well, we're in the we're in the house again, and there's a new show, and it's like, okay, I need something else. I need something more. You know, that's that's what I'm missing. That's why I'm not, you know, stoked right now. And it's like I'm moving with my girlfriend. That's awesome, uh, and scary. And so that's it's cool. It's cool. Cool things are happening. But um, yeah, just. You know, like I said, the GameStop went, but I feel weird bragging about money to friends. Um, especially when, right now when people, like, aren't doing so hot with, you know, people losing their jobs. Especially a lot of my friends are gig workers. You know, I have a lot of bartender friends. I have a lot of friends that are, like, touring roadies um, or promote shows. You know, hot stuff from years of playing in bands and doing music photography. Uh, so it's weird to like brag and be like, hey, I made a bunch of money in the stock market, you know, and then seeing them be like, you know, Wall Street, blah, 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 and you're like, well, I, and so I want to teach them how to do it. Um, but I'm also, there's also a fear in teaching people something like that because it is dangerous. So it's like being a caveman with fire and being like, okay, this is a really cool thing, but it could literally kill you. So... You know, you, you have to, like, manage those exp- I'd be like, okay, this could literally kill you. <laughs> be careful. And then people still, you know, it, it's just, I think, when you get down to it, I think it comes down to just getting rid of your victim mentality. And, like, no matter what happens, like, it's, you can always blame somebody else. But if, if you just say, okay... How is this my fault? And that's that's just how you look at hardships. What could I have done instead? You know, and not in like a way of regret, but in a way of like learning. And you're always looking for the lesson in anything bad that comes and how you could have done better, how you could have communicated better, how you could have trained a person better. Like, yeah, shit's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But how can you mitigate those risks for next time? And I think once you can really embrace that concept, that's when your life starts to, to get better and to change and improve. And that's I, I've, I've got there. So now it's like, okay, what can I do to increase my chances of success? I want to put myself in a place to succeed. And it's like having deep knowledge of a variety of skill sets, which makes me an employable Swiss Army knife on the on the production team. Uh, having the assets, having the cameras, having the lenses, having the lighting equipment, and having the knowledge on how to use all of it, so that I can work under people who have an artistic vision but don't know the technical side of it. That makes me very valuable because that's something that's missing. But then also people that have an artistic vision that. I mean, I guess that's still the technical side that don't know how to operationally carry it out. Like, they might want lighting that looks like this. Okay, how can I do that for them? You know? And just having that depth and that breadth of knowledge. Uh, and then also, at the same time, like having the self-awareness to, to know what I want to do for a living. You know, I... I love, I love making these YouTube videos. I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm glad I started doing the whisper rambling. Um, and I think that's gonna, that's slowly starting to make me more interested in really working hard on my other YouTube channels that have been stagnant, like, honestly stagnant. So, but having the self-awareness to be like, okay, I really like the light stuff. If I could do one thing, I would love to just light shit. Which is kind of like half of being a DP. The other half is like the conceptual, and I love doing that, but the problem is uh, to, to, to get good angles, it takes me time, and I, I need to, like, experiment, and you just don't really have that time to, like, free flow it on set. You kind of have to, like, go in, know what you're doing. Here's the camera. This is a good angle. Let's go. Um, and so it's that's part of the problem. So doing the films, I think I can get faster at it um, by just experimenting more on my own and then you know you have the experience and then you start to connect the dots and now you have the knowledge um so there's that and you know just increasing 
it's like it, if the world of filmmaking starts to become commoditized like photography has, which I'm sure it's going that way, having YouTube, having investing, having these other skills to, to just stay afloat and keep good and, and still do the stuff I love for just less money, but be fine because I've got these other sources of income. That's kind of, that's, that's what I'm doing this year and I just need the framework for it. So, with all that said, if you got suggestions, I'd love to hear them. If you got books you like about framework for bettering yourself, I've maybe I've read it already, but I love book recommendations, especially about self-improvement and all that kind of shit. And, uh, yeah. I, obviously, I'll report back. Because uh, it's what I love to ramble about. So, if you uh, have anything you want to talk about, if you have goals, if you want to help with your framework, drop a comment. Let's let's chop some wood because I think sometimes helping other people with their goals, I could, you could take those lessons and like be like, oh dang, you know, and like it, it hits you too. You're like, that's very relatable to my situation. So that's where I want to. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to be, and I want to help people along the way. And if I can help you, yeah. Um, so that's that. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to me ramble. Um, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here. I'd be surprised if you made it this far without subscribing if you're not subscribed. And, uh, yeah.